Rock and roll hoochie coo, here we go. Um, doing some transformations now, and we'll have to put our, put our name on this. So we'll be Ricky this time. And uh, let's see, we've done day one and day two. We talked about translation, moving it up and down, left and right. And then on day two, we talked about the uh, stretching and compression, compressing the uh, scale changes and whatnot, graphs, and how they're going to behave. So in our class, we talked about grouping things with X and grouping things with Y. And so in this particular problem, we have some stuff here that is, I guess, with the X. The stuff that's in the parentheses to the second power is affecting the, that X. And so any other action on that side needs to be moved over with the Y. So the 3 and the 4 need to be moved over with the Y. We just do this just to kind of keep things straight. And so the first thing we want to do is move that 4 over. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then after that, we're going to uh, move the 3 over. So to move the 4 over, we have to minus. <clears throat> Sorry. And then had to hit the cough button there. Excuse me. Uh, to move the 4 over, we minus, and then to move the 3 over, we divide. So the other side, when we clean this up, is going to look like this. It's going to look like y minus 4, all that stuff divided by 3, equals x minus 3, all that squared. Okay? So now we can go ahead and describe our changes. And to start, do we see any reflections that need to be made? Are there any negatives that are multiplied or divided by x or y? Answer? No, there are not. So we have no reflections. Okay, is this going to move the vertex right or left or up or down? So let's look at the x and let's see if it moves it right or left. And so x minus 3, if it's minus, it's kind of the opposite of what we normally would think. It's going to shift it to the right. So our vertex then is going to go right 3. And if we look at our y, the vertical, minus 4, indicates it's going to go up 4. So our vertex, our new vertex, is going to be at 3, 4. And you can kind of look at this and go, oh, let's see if, if I did that right. That's going to be the opposite. So at negative 4 there, yeah, that's a positive 4. And then negative 3 or minus 3 there, and that's the opposite. Good. So they're both opposite. All right, any stretches or compressions? Well, I see here that I am dividing by 3. So dividing, in our class we talked about dividing. DS, dividing is a stretch. We got either DS or MC. Division, stretch, and that's on the Y, so it's the vertical. So it's a vertical stretch. So a vertical stretch on the um, on the vertical is going to make this a skinny parabola. Vertical stretch. So where's my vertex going to be? It's going to go to the right three, up four. And be up here, no reflections, and it's going to be a skinny, a skinnier than the parent function. It's going to grow faster, uh, parabola. So that's going to have a vertex of 3, 4, and it's going to be skinny, skinny. Right, Forrest? Skinny. <coughs> so. Um, just one other thing I'd like to mention, just kind of in wrapping this whole thing up, is that if we move it back and solve it for y and kind of put it in that vertex form. Okay, so if I move it back and I just rearrange the equation all back and have it solve for y and I write that again. So basically what we started with here, we have y equals 3 times x minus uh, 3 plus 4. So if you analyze this in vertex form, okay, you have your... Um, minus 3, which moves the vertex to the right 3. And then you have your plus 4, which actually moves it up. So that's so this plus 4 isn't the opposite of the way you normally would think if it's solved for y. All right, and then the times by 3, oh, I forgot my squared. The times by 3 makes this graph increase a little bit faster. It's skinnier. It's going to shoot up. The little rocket parabola is going to shoot up faster than it would if it wasn't multiplied by 3. All right, number two. Is there anything on the x side that needs to be moved over? 
Well, all this stuff is in parentheses to the squared except for this minus 5. So I want to fire that over to the other side. So to get minus 5 over, I'm going to add it. So now on the other side, I have y plus 5. And on my x side, my horizontal side, I have x plus 1 divided by negative 2 all to the second power there. Okay, so all that stuff is with the x. Now, any reflections? Well, I do have a negative with the x, so that means I'm going to reflect over the y. Okay. My vertex for this one is going to, because of that plus, it's going to move to the left one. And because that's a plus, that's going to move it down five. Okay, so my vertex here for this one is going to be uh, negative 1, negative 5. And then I'm going to have, there's another division, so that's a ds, that's a division as a stretch on the horizontal this time. So it's going to be a horizontal stretch. Horizontal. Hello. It's, it's early in the morning right now. I'm recording this at 2 a.m. Just kidding, I'm not. Horizontal stretch. It is currently, in case you're curious, it's currently 8.08 .08 a.m. after election day. So however you feel about that. Um, what happens now? This one moved to the left one and down five. So the vertex is right there. It reflected over x. So really, we got to think about what that means for the graph right away. So again, normally, if this is a parabola, the parent function is going to look something like that, right? And if it reflects over the, wait a minute, I just said x, but I meant y. If it reflects over the y-axis right here, all right, what's that going to do? Well, it's just going to flip it around right on top of itself. So it's really not going to change anything. So that doesn't do anything. And it makes sense that it doesn't change anything because, look, if you have a negative and you square it, what happens? Nothing. Okay. becomes positive. I guess not nothing happens. It just becomes positive. So it doesn't really have an effect there. It's always positive. You're squaring them. Okay, horizontal stretch. What's that going to do? That's going to pull it from the horizontal on each side. It's going to pull it that way, so it's going to make it wider. So here I'm going to have a... A little bit wider parabola. We're just making a sketch, so I want you to label it wide, and then always label your vertex, please. Negative one, negative five. Okay. Talking points again here. My vertex negative one is opposite in my equation positive one, negative five, positive five, right there like that, and it's a wide one. Any questions? Okay, good. Next problem. All right, on this next problem, I see a little error in the in the um, actual problem itself. So tisk tisk, math teachers, we're missing a parenthesis here, aren't we, guys? So let's add a little nice little parenthesis right there. See, it's a double one now. Okay, because the coefficient. And this is a good point here to talk about and remind you guys. But when we're doing this, the coefficient of x and y has to be one. That's a stupid color to use on that background. So, yeah, let's do that. I don't know. The coefficient of x and y has to be a 1. So, remember what I said. Do not distribute that negative. Do not distribute any stuff in front of the parentheses there because you're going to goof up your right and left stuff. Okay, anything that doesn't belong on the x side. Well, this 1 needs to fire over to the other side, and so does that 2. Okay, so let's shoot that 1 over there first. That's going to be a y minus 1. You get rid of a plus 1, you minus 1 to both sides. And then how do I get rid of a divide 2? Times 2 on both sides. So that side becomes 2 times y minus 1 equal to, and then all in parentheses negative, x minus 3, double parenthesis cubed. Okay. Any reflections? Yes, sir. I see one right here. There's a negative that's grouped actually with the x, so that's going to reflect over the y. So reflect over y. Okay. It's going to move, since it's minus 3, it's going to move to the right 3. 
and minus 1 on the y is going to move it up 1. And there is a compression, multiplication, compression, MC, like the media center, MC, multiplication, compression, on the vertical. It's going to have a vertical compression. It's going to be like squashing you like a pancake. So what does the parent function look like for this one? Half a parabola going up, a little skinnier parabola because it's cubed, and then another half of the parabola going down like that. Okay, this one's going to get reflected over the y-axis. So what that means is it's going to be like a backwards one. You know, so it's going to be like, here, let's watch, let's try this. It's going to be like a backwards one like that. Okay, but where does it need to move? It needs to move right three. So we're going to go, let's see if I can just, one, two, three, up one. There it is right there. And it's going to have a vertical compression. So it'd be cool if I could just, like, distort this or something, but I can't. So it's going to be a vertical compression, so there's my vertex, and, but it's going to be a skinnier one, so it's going to be like, whoosh. wait a minute, Mr. Bowler, I'm not going to be skinny. Late night, last night. Okay, so it's going to be vertically compressed, so it'd be like, it would be like, um, you know, this and this are coming down on you. It's like, this is coming down. Oh, I'm going to smush you. Here I come, little cubic. I'm going to smush you from there, and I'm going to smush you from there. If I smush you from top and bottom, what happens? Oh my goodness, that's not good. What happens? You're going to get wider. Okay, you're going to actually get wider. So let me just delete all this stuff here that I got in the way. So we'll get rid of that because it's going to be a wider one. And then those are my fun compactor deals. All right, so what's this going to look like now? It's going to be a backwards one, and it's going to be a little wider because it got vertically compressed. Okay. Numerically, why is it going to be wider? Why is it not going to grow as fast? Well, because after you cube all that stuff and do all that, you're going to divide it by 2, so it's going to actually be a little smaller number. As x increases, y is going to increase by a little slower rate because you're dividing it by 2. So that's why it's going to be a little wider than the parent function. Vertex is going to be 3, 1, and it's going to be a wide one. Remember, label it wide just because we're just making a little sketch, so we don't really know... If you're wide, it's different from the next person's wide, and so on and so forth. All right. Hold your applause, please. Um, and uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you in class.